on, let's just thank God we are free this morning. Thank you, Jesus, you have set us free. Come on, thank him personally. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. And thank you also, Father God, for filling us with your Holy Spirit and power to move forward, not just being loosed, but being filled to follow you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you today. I was so blessed to come in, and we have about 50 folks in that classroom right over there in a marriage class. And then, um, and I'm so proud of them to, to, to work and develop on uh, their marriage. And then uh, next week, uh, no, excuse me, 11 o'clock, we're having um, our Next Steps class. And that's talking about introducing you to who Harvest is, why we exist, and, and it's very informative to let you know uh, all about this ministry. If you've not signed up, just go anyway, because just tell them, oh, Pastor Sutter quit. Set, no, set 11 o'clock, right? All right. So I, I want to uh, get right into our, our message for today. And... As I always try to do, I try to make all of our messages very, very simple, very clear. And I have an assignment that I've been working on is of how to make your Father God your source and your provider. How to make God the Father, how to make Him, you know, what, are the, what do I need to do on my part in order for God to be with me and meet all the different needs that I have? spirit, soul, and body, financially, materially, in every, every way. And God has a plan. And uh, when you received Jesus, you came into the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is not a physical place here on earth today. There's a real place called, you know, heaven. And, and but yet, Jesus came to establish the kingdom in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when you receive Jesus, you receive the king. And there is a kingdom, and there is a kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And it's very, very real. And so also within that kingdom, uh, there's, there's principles. There's, there's principles of how we're to conduct ourselves in the kingdom of God. We're no longer just living on this earth, but also now in Christ, living in the kingdom of God. And God has a way of doing. God has a way of being. God has a way of uh, giving us instruction so that we, we can look and apply these principles and, and receive God in, in the ways that we might never have been introduced uh, to Him uh, that we don't know about and it's so good that we're studying this so how to make your faithful God your source and provider we've talked about his faithfulness James 1 17 says every good thing every what thing good. is every good thing given and every perfect thing every what perfect thing is from above comes down from the father of lights the creator the sustainer of heavens in whom there's no variation no rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning for he is perfect therefore his word is perfect God is flawless therefore his word is flawless and never changes so in other words nothing from God is not good examine what's truly happening and if it's not good that's not from God. In other words, <laughs> I hear, hear my wife right now saying, good God, bad devil. Right? There's an enemy out there that Jesus defeated, and we're, we've been raised up in Christ Jesus, uh, been given the same authority so that we can, we, we, can, we can fulfill the will of God. And even when the enemy tries to come at us, we have the name of Jesus, and we're in Christ. And I thank God that um, we avert bad things from happening to us because we live in His Word, we take our authority, and we move forward in the kingdom. So God is faithful to His Word, God is faithful to His ways, God is faithful to His principles, and God is faithful so His principles 
always, presume, always produce his results if we'll just work these principles, very simple principles. We all need God as our source that we can depend on. A source is a supplier of things we cannot produce on our own. The world economic system is temporary, it's shaky. We've seen the stock market fall up and down in markets around the world as well. But Hebrews 12, 28 tells us that God's kingdom, God's kingdom is unbeatable. It, it, God's kingdom is unmovable. God's kingdom is unstoppable, unconquerable, and unshakable, and it has been given to us. I'm in the kingdom. I received Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I, I, I have peace from God through Jesus. I have joy that, that, that has come into my life that I never knew aside from meeting the king. His name is Jesus. So thankful. And so many of the world out there is seeking being right with a God they don't know. They have no peace. They have no joy, ultimately speaking. And that's why there's all kinds of crazy addictions and lifestyles and all that kind of stuff. But it's never going to fill that void. Only Jesus can. So because we have a king, what's his name? His name is Jesus. And we've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God's principles and God's word is unshakable. And God, his word, and his kingdom are faithful. When it comes to our supporting, now even here's a principle. Uh, when, it, when it comes to our supporting his church and the Great Commission, he will all, always provide for our needs when we're involved. And we'll see that in the scripture. I'm going to begin to give you some principles of stewardship. What does that mean? How, how we use our time, our talents, and our resources. And before I say another word, I want to let you know that the stewardship I'm talking about always advances the kingdom of God, always advances the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, always advances the kingdom of God. Always. If you take that out of the picture, that's where all kinds of extreme teaching on finances cause people to be disillusioned and, 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 and they're wondering why certain things aren't working is because sometimes there's not the full principles of the kingdom of God explained. Because God is faithful to and his kingdom principles are unshakable, we can, we can give of our time, our talents, and our resources, and then God will guarantee that he'll become our source and meet our needs. You've heard it said before, and it's a good statement, whatever you make happen for God, he'll make happen for you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. When you start talking about giving of your time, talents, and resources, stop thinking that when you give, it's subtraction. We need to start thinking when God says for us to give of our time, talents, and resources, he begins a law of multiplication. When I give him my talents, when I first, uh, you know, ser stepped out to serve God, I, I had the giftings on the inside of me that God equipped me with, but, but I never, I, I really wasn't putting them to work like they were supposed to be. There are certain talents you guys have that unless you sow it, unless you give some portion of it to the kingdom of God, will, will, not, will not develop. But over the years, I began to give my time, my talents, my resources, and he began, in God's hand, he began to shape me, he began to improve me, he began to multiply uh, some gifts and some talents I have to the point of where I am today, but I'm not satisfied where I am today. I'm going to keep sowing my talents, I'm going to keep sowing, uh, you know, all the different things God has given me, and, and, and it's to benefit, help others, advance the kingdom, share the gospel. But there's a benefit of doing these different things that whatever you give to God, you know, it's going to be multiplied back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Is that good news? That's kingdom. 
As a pastor, I'm telling you, it grieves my heart more than you can, you can feel or imagine of the extreme teaching, give to get. I want to give to bless. I want to give to the gospel. I want to give to this local church because I, I, I believe in this church and it helps, fund the, it helps fund the budget. But we do th- major outreach in every aspect and it includes our local area, our region, our state, our nation, and nations of the world. And the increase that comes upon this house because this, our church tithes and gives. My wife and I tithe and give. And uh, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring increase to us but so that we can... We can expand our outreach further and further and further and extend the stakes of helping people be pulled out of hell and populate heaven. Do you understand the motive behind this stewardship series? Do you understand that? Have you seen extremes where there's just teaching on, you know, uh, uh, there's teaching out there I don't agree with. Because it's not kingdom dominant. It's me dominant. What I can get out of it dominant. That's not the kingdom of God. A kingdom principle, if you, if you want to be used of God, we, we, we've got to become a servant. Serve others. And it's amazing. As you just operate in the principles of God, He meets your needs. In every way. Stewardship, I'm going to say it again, stewardship always keeps in mind the advancing of the kingdom, the advancing of the gospel, and in in this situation, advancing Harvest Church, we're part of a vision, we're part of a mandate, we exist as a church because God wanted us to be here. So because God is faithful and His kingdom principles are unshakable, investing or giving into the kingdom of God guarantees that God will become our source and meet our needs. Let me give you an example of this as we turn to Philippians 4.14. I want to give you uh, uh, just an insight here that helps keep this teaching balanced. I'm bold in a balanced way. Philippians 4.14, we're we're looking at a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and and it says, "It it was good that you helped me, this is Paul speaking, his ministry, when I needed help. You people in Philippi, remember I first told the gospel news there, and when I left Macedonia, he was doing some other, you know, uh, ministry, he said, you know what, Church of Philippi, uh, You were the only church that gave help to me. And several times you sent things I needed when I was at Thessalonica. Really, hear my heart. Paul had a sincere heart here. Paul wasn't a taker. He was a giver. And as he, as as he, the the ministry developed in Paul's life, uh, there, there, do you know it, it takes finances, it takes stewardship, it takes time, talents, and resources of a, of a group of people and a mass of people to help fulfill the mandate of whatever God's called us to. And I highly encourage you to get involved. Not just for what you can get, but the pur- purpose with which you can fulfill. You were the only church up. Several times you sent things I needed when I was in Thessalonica, really. And he said, this in a sincere heart, it's not that I want to get gifts from you, but I, I want you to have the benefit that comes from giving. God's not just after your money. He's after your gifting. He's after some of your time and your resources. Because there is a will of God we must fulfill. We get to fulfill. I say this fairly consistent, but there's coming a day that I'm going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. And he's going to judge me for what I was supposed to accomplish here on this earth. My purpose in him. His plans, his purposes, his pursuits for my life. 
and so will you. I'm just bold enough to tell you that because on that day, I want you to be fully equipped and look forward to and be excited about that day. God doesn't expect all your time, all your resources, all your gifts, all the time. My wife and I serve a couple hundred ministers over North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, and the ordained ministers here at Harvest. And that takes time, that takes effort. That takes all of us working, working together, fulfilling our purpose. And, and, and Paul said, listen, I, I want you to know the benefit that comes from giving. I, I, you know, because you've sown into my life, you're the only, only church that did. I have everything I need. I have even more than I need. I have all I need because Epaphroditus uh, brought your gift to me, and your gift is like a sweet-smelling sacrifice offered to God. When, you, when, you, when we receive tithes and offerings... When you, when you give of your tithes and offerings today, don't give and thank you for all my needs met. God, I worship you with my giving. I, I worship you with my time, talents, and resources. I, 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 worship, I, I worship you today because thank you for helping me advance your kingdom. Thank you for helping me uh, be a part of the Harvest Church family and be responsible for this budget together so we can do more and more and more and more to bless people. And oh, by the way, and God, thank you for meeting all my needs. Aphrodite has brought your gift to me. Gifts like a sweet smelling sacrifice offered to God. God accepts that sacrifice. And it pleases him when we come this direction in this way. And then verse 19 is a, is a verse we all get excited, but not, not too many qualify. We run to Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And we run to Philippians 4.19. And the word says, you know what? My God will use his glorious riches to give you everything you need. He'll do this through Christ Jesus. But giving and receiving is an unshakable principle of the kingdom of God. But we need to explain this just for the next few minutes. Let's explain this. The Apostle Paul commented or commended them for, for giving their generous gift he sent for his ministry. And at the time Paul wrote this, uh, this Philippian letter, he was, he was in a Roman prison. And over the years, he traveled, he preached the gospel, he raised up churches, he worked with leaders and, and, and given his life for, for, for the gospel, for advancing the kingdom, for advancing God's church. But of all the churches Paul had poured his life into, not one of them helped them financially except, except the church of Philippi. But Paul received that package sent from the Philippians, in that package, he found a sizable offering to help him continue to do ministry in the right motive. They sent him support during difficult days in his life. The Philippian church didn't just say, thank you for ministering to me. Well, we pray for your situation, brother. You know, we ask, God give, them, give him strength. And then forget about Paul? Instead, all of us, including me, we need to understand our responsibility to support the local church, to support advancing the kingdom, to support what God's doing on the earth today. Now listen to me. But of all the churches Paul had poured his life into, none of them helped him financially the way, the way they should have, but the Philippian church stepped up. The Philippians 
didn't just say, hey, I'm praying for you, brother, uh, then forget about Paul. Instead, they understood their responsibility to help them, so they received an offering to support him and communicate their love for him. Boy, you can just see people's heart toward God and how they serve with their time, talents, and resources. You just can't. Because, again, we're doing this with the right perspective. And as a result, see, we can't just jump to Philippians 4.19, get excited about God meets all my needs. But as a result of them supporting the ministry, Paul shares with them the benef- one of the benefits of giving. And what's the first benefit of giving? Please. Advance the kingdom. Spread the gospel more. Let's make sure this church stays here and, and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And, ex- and we're ever expanding our, our stake and our reach because we're partnered together with God. And we're sent here by God to do this thing. I don't just go to church at Harvest. I'm a part of the Harvest family. It's my responsibility to take care of this house. What's the first benefit? Hey. We're advancing the kingdom. We're doing this together. But look at the benefits of it. There are the benefits when you give. God will meet your needs. The Renner interpretive version of Philippians 4.19 says, But my God will supply our needs. Remember, what happened before this scripture? One, one, one church stepped up to be a part of the ministry. And that's the only church that could claim this scripture and apply this scripture and walk in this scripture. But my God will supply our needs so completely that he eliminates all of our deficiencies that he meets all of our physical and tangible needs until we're so full. We have no more capacity to hold anything else. And my God will supply all our needs until we are totally filled, packed full, overfl- overflowing, overflowing to the point of bursting at the seams and spilling over. Well, that's wonderful. And, and it puts us in a position to be able to give to another level. Take care of... You know, take care of God's house and the, and the vision and advance the kingdom, pay my bills and save. God will take care of us. I believe every year is God, God's blessings upon us and we're advancing the kingdom in our time, our talents and our resources. God's taking care of all of our needs. But that's not why I'm preaching stewardship. It's part of it. It is one of the benefits You remember in uh, Genesis, the book of Genesis, I, d- I didn't have this, but Genesis 8.22, it says, you know what, think about this, people are so distraught about global war- warming and all that kind of stuff, and, but I want to let you know, God's principles, if there's global warning, that w- warming, that doesn't take God's principles away from working, because this is what my God said. Genesis 8.22, while the earth remains. Are we still on the earth? All right. While the earth remains, seed, time, and? Okay, how do you get to the harvest? And why are we sowing seed? To advance the kingdom. Advance the gospel. I thank God as I work his principles, he he, he meets my needs. Because I'm a part of meeting others. So seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, God says, it's not going to cease. These kingdom principles will always work. Always. Why? Because God said so. No wonder why we can now get excited about Luke 6.38, give, but I'm not, I'm not... Too many, again, I've been in these things for for a minute. 
And I've been in meetings that it was all about the scripture that says the benefit. It was all about look at my car, look at my mansion, look at my whatever, 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 whatever. I, 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 that's just an unhealthy way that God, God does not want us to have that perspective of why we sow and why we give to the church. Luke 6, 38, given and will be given unto you how? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, and now remember that this, that he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly because there's a law of seed time and harvest. Keep it on. <laughs> Show the congregation. He's saying my time's up. <laughs> I, I told him to. But another principle here we're talking about, remember that if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow generously, uh, that the blessings may come on others. What? Did you just see that? Back up. Remember this, he who sows sparingly, reaps sparingly, and he who sows generously, that's why, so that blessings come to others, will reap generously and be blessed also. In Galatians 6, 7, we're going to have to stop here now. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. He'll not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. You know, again, I, because my walk with God and relationship with God helped me overcome those teachings, some other people got disillusioned because of the angle of the teaching and the extreme of the teaching, and some have walked away from God just because it, all, it was all money-minded, money-based, what I can get, what I can get, you know, what I can get, build bigger storehouses. Before you can get excited about Philippians 4.19 and these other scriptures that I just gave you, you got to get excited about Philippians 14 through 18. Anybody get what I'm saying? And right along with this principle of all of the different things I discussed today, another principle of the kingdom of God in your stewardship has to be seek ye first a better car. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get that mansion. I'm not saying God doesn't want you to have nice things, but let him bring it to you in his timing, in his way the way he increases. The blessings of God, they, they what do we say this? I, yeah, I hate that word rich, because people say, rich, oh Lord, he diverted back to being rich. That word rich means abundantly supplied. Right? And as no what? Sorrow with it. Man, when you do things God's way. My wife and I have been doing these things for, th Lord Jesus, over 38 years. And God didn't, you know, I didn't just tithe one day and all of a sudden he paid my house off. But he gave me an increase to pay a little bit toward the mortgage. Beyond my payment. Anyway, because we put the kingdom first. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. We examine our hearts. Let's examine our heart right now. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, um, Today's your day. I mean, that's... If you don't know the, Lord, know the Lord's your Savior, here's what you're experiencing right now because the Word of God says it. God's drawing you by the Holy Spirit to come to Jesus right now. That's what you're feeling. Now, now if you're going to look to the person to the right of you and to the left of you, then, that, then you're going to overlook that sense of God drawing you to Jesus. But don't make a decision based upon them. Today's your day. If you want to receive the Lord as your personal Savior today, 
And uh, no one's looking around right now, just me and you. Uh, say, Pastor Coyne, Lee, uh, include me in this prayer of salvation. Lift up your hand, because I want to see that hand. And I'll acknowledge it. Got you, bud. Yeah, it's your day. Any day you resist becomes easier to resist the next day. Thank you, Father. Let's all pray this prayer of salvation out loud. Say it with me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. Yep, mean it with your heart and say these words with your mouth. Say, God, I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sin because he lived innocent so he could pay for my wages, which is death. I believe that you went to hell for me. I believe on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Jesus, I believe you're alive. I know you've been raised from the dead. And I'm sorry for my past. I, I, I repent. That word repent means I'm taking a 180 away from my old stuff. And I'm saying, God, forgive me. God, say it with me. God, forgive me. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior and as my Lord. Thank you for saving me. I'm a child of God. I've entered into the kingdom. I'm so thankful. Come on, let's be thankful that we're right with God today. Let's be thankful that, that, that we have peace that passes all understanding today.